By stage 12, though, the picture has changed completely, and it's this man, Didier Oriol, who holds the lead. Behind him, much has happened. Ericsson, who held the lead so strongly up until about stage nine, landed badly on a rock, split a hydraulic pipe, and his Toyota burst into flames. He and his co-driver were unhurt in the incident, but that was their rally over and run. Oriol moved up into first place, and Biazion into second, but then Biazion had troubles, Vatanen sneaked past him, and it's Ari Vatanen at the end of the day who holds second place in the Galant VR4. He neatly splits the all-conquering deltas, so it's Oriol for Lancia, then this man for Mitsubishi, and then Biazion again for Lancia. And here is Mickey Biazion running in third place as he goes towards the overnight halt. There are no team orders in the Lancia camp as yet because competition at the front of the field is still far too intense. Close behind Mickey Biazion's Delta Integrale comes the Toyota Celica of Spanish driver Carlos Sainz. And he is not hanging about as you can see, pushing very, very hard. And he does have a great deal of work ahead of him because two Toyotas have already fallen by the wayside because not only has Ericsson caught fire, but Belgian driver Patrick Snyers is missing from the lineup. His engine began to overheat and went out altogether with a head gasket. And in the same way that Vatanen has profited from disaster at the front, so also Jimmy McRae, who has now made his way up to fifth position with his Galant VR4. And Jimmy McRae must be very, very pleased with the way things are going. His first international outing since uh, something of fiasco in New Zealand last year. And after so long as a champion for the Opal Rally team in England and Europe. Behind him and slowly gaining ground to make up the Lancia numbers at the front of the field is Alex Fiorio in the Integrale. He's inherited a couple of places from earlier disasters and the Lancia rat pack at the front is beginning to look fairly heavy. And having some fairly heavy weight problems behind him, Ewa Kankinen with the Celica GT4. A broken prop shaft delayed him along the way and he has now dropped back at the end of day one to seventh place. And in fact, the overnight halt was much enlivened by the arrival of a spectator clutching the broken half of Kankinen's prop shaft. Whether he thought they were going to repair it or not wasn't clear. Something else that wasn't clear was the makeup of the Lancia team, Jorge Ricalde, the semi privateer entry, and the mysterious absence of Marcou Alain. Questions that were asked before the start and not answered as Ricalde heads towards the first overnight halt in eighth position. He's the most competitive Michelin user not using the ATS moose-filled tyres and he's paid the penalty with three punctures on the first stage and several others through the day and one of the things that must have upset him was hearing that Didier Oriol arrived at one time control with a hole in his ATS tyre but had still set the fastest time on that stage. As everybody predicted this is turning out to be a rally of the tyres.